guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game is sponsored by The Game Crafter. In today's game review we're going to be talking about the game Table Golf and Table Golf is a two to six player game. It takes about a half an hour to 45 minutes to play and is for ages about eight and up. In the game Table Golf you're simply going to be getting a golf ball, there's going to be a tee, there's going to be a hole, and there's going to be hazards as well as weather cards. You and up to five other players are going to basically be placing down different terrain onto the tabletop of wherever you're playing as well as a hole and of course the tee. And you'll be trying to flick and or motion slide your ball or your you know, golf ball across the table, avoiding the terrain, because if you land on terrain, you'll have to be trying to flick them in different weird ways to get your ball into the hole. The first player to get their ball into each hole is going to get the bonus card or the weather card for each, ev for each and every single hole. And each hole is going to provide something unique and different as to how you're going to play, what you can do on your turn, and how terrain might affect your ball. And uh, that is the basic idea of it. You can play up to four holes if you want, or if you're feeling a little bit more uh, enticed with the game, you can play up to nine holes. And your objective is simply to get the most holes uh, acquired, or the most uh, balls in your hole first, for the entire game. Whoever has the most at the end of the game is the winner of the game, Table Golf. Pretty simple style dexterity game, which involves flicking cards, similar to a game called Brink that I really enjoy, or that Grant really enjoys. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how it is played, and then we'll come up and I'll talk about the game. So here's Table Golf and everything that the game includes. When you buy the game, you'll be getting this box here, along with, of course, the rule book for the game, which explains the rules of the game. And then you're going to be getting a deck of cards, which will be utilized in different ways. First of all, there are these six character golfers that you can choose from that will, of course, have their colored golf ball on the back. This is what you'll be using to flick across the table to try and get from the tee to the hole. This is the tee card, which is where you're going to be taking your golf ball and be flicking them. The game defines flicking as simply placing your hand on the table, not moving your hand off the table, and then using your fingers to toss the ball from one point to another. And of course, your objective is to get this specific ball from here and then put it right into there. That's how you win if you can do it before anybody else. Uh, additionally, there's going to be these cards here. These cards are the weather cards, or basically the change in gameplay cards. You'll be flipping over one of them for each of the rounds, or each of the holes, and they will do different abilities based on which one you choose. Like behind the back, whenever flicking the golf ball, your feet must be planting, uh, planted facing away from the table. Ooh, that's kind of crazy. And so they all have unique ways of where you're going to be flipping the they're flicking the ball around. These are the three different terrain cards, and each player is going to get these cards shuffled up and dealt to them. Uh, everybody's going to have the same amount of cards, but there are three different types, whether it be grass, water, or desert. The water is when your ball is touching this card. You must flick the ball using your thumb and your middle finger. So you'll be doing something like this. And then this one over here is when the ball is touching this card. You have to flick the ball with your thumb as though you're flicking it. So you'd be doing it like that, like you'd be doing like a fl flipping a coin, basically. And then this one over here says that you'd be flicking the ball using your pinky and your ring finger, which is ah, 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 rather, rather challenging, of course. And that's pretty much what you get in the game. You're going to get all this stuff put into one little box here that is going to encompass the entire game of table golf. So let's go ahead and show you how a setup works and then how to play. Okay, so the game Table Golf is now set up. I went ahead and shuffled the deck of the random weather conditions or cards that will change each round's worth of gameplay. I also shuffled the hole in with the different terrain cards. And I have the tee set aside and, of course, the golf balls, which will indicate the number of players. If you're playing a three-player game, you'll take three of these balls, removing the rest of these cards. And then you're going to deal out these cards here, the terrain cards and the hole card, in equal decks. So everybody is going to be getting the same number of cards and you're going to deal out the entire deck to each player until there are no cards remaining. Then each player is going to go ahead and check their hand. So they're going to go and th look through their hand to see if they have the hole, which, oh, there we go. There's the hole. That means the other players don't have it. Each player is going to go ahead and set their hand off to the side. And this is going to be the play area for us, but your table will be probably a lot different. Then the player who has the hole will take the T, place the T somewhere, and I'll go ahead and place it right here and then I'll place the hole somewhere like right here and of course everybody's going to get their own golf ball as well and then the train is going to start getting thrown onto the board here 
I will move this off to the side as well. So players are going to take any of the terrain they want as long as there are less than two of that type of terrain on the board, and they're going to toss it with their hand on the table onto the area here. And the next player will get a chance to go, and they'll also toss it on. And then the next player will get a chance to go, and it'll keep going like that. And as you can see now, there are two of these desert traps, so that means that no more can be thrown onto the board. So this player is going to go ahead and toss something like that one on, and this player is going to go ahead and either choose to do the uh, green or the blue and okay he chose green which means that there's only one left to toss here which is going to be blue so he'll toss a blue one onto the board and then after that now you have two of each type each player is going to simply choose a card from their hand and place a card uh, of that, that type onto the same type of card. So for instance, they got the two different grass areas. He'll take a grass card and place it somewhere on one of the two other grass areas. The same will be said for all of the rest of the cards as well. And players can choose any type of card they want up until the point where all the cards have been placed on the table following the rule that they can't touch any other type of trap. So make sure that when you place them that you uh, don't add traps to other traps because that wouldn't make much sense. And eventually here, all the cards are going to go on to the table. And I think I think you get the idea. I'll go ahead and quickly drop the rest of these on. And there's not too many left anyway. And then after that, we will proceed to the next aspect of the game. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, what do we got here? This one over here, blue one. This one over here, green. And then another blue one. Yeah, there we go. There's our last blue one. We'll do something like that. Yeah, something like that. And then this last one here, something like that. Okay, so now the table has basically been set up so that you can play this one hole. And this is one round of play. And each of the players are going to be playing on the tee, starting with the player who had the hole. He's going to go ahead and put plant his hand down onto the area here, and then he's going to basically toss or flick the card on. So I'm just going to do it this way. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was terrible. Let's say I, let's say I did it better. Yeah, okay. And then it would be the next player's turn. The next player is going to go ahead and flick as well. And you're trying to get to the hole. If you can get a hole in one on the first turn, you're going to actually get to draw an extra card from this tabletop area here. You can choose to play with these or not play with these. But in general, you're going to be going ahead and flipping over one and reading what it says. This one here says, when flicking the golf ball, the owner's head must be at the same level as the golf ball. So he's like, you're like peering in. So you're going to actually take your head and put it next to the golf ball as you're throwing it. Uh, and this is actually, actually going to be the trophy for this specific round. But like I said, if you get a hole in one in your first shot, you'll get actually the next card off the top of the deck as a trophy as well, which can give you additional points for the end of the game. And what will eventually happen is players are all going to do their flicks, and then it'll go back to the, next, the first player again, and the player is going to have to flick like they normally would, but if they're on one of these traps here, they're going to have to do what it says. So for instance, this one says whenever this ball is touching it, you have to flick the ball using your thumb and middle finger. So in this case, you have to do these, and then toss. And if you can toss onto here, that's going to end the round. I mean, this player won the table uh, golf. But if not, if he fails, it would keep going until somebody did. And make sure, of course, you provide, you provide, you follow the rules for whatever the specific round states. In this case, he would take this. The round would reset. A new one of these would come out. You're going to go ahead and distribute these out again. The player uh, who won, I believe, is going to be the one who places this hole out somewhere. And you would keep going playing table golf. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about a couple of these ones here. So we have the two hands golf. When flicking the golf ball, you must flick both using uh, you must flick using both of your hands. Only one needs to touch the table. Wow. When flicking the golf ball during this hole, the golf ball must be held vertically. Well, that's weird. And there's there's a whole bunch of different ones. Levitation. There's quicksand. We talked about behind the back. There's a golf ball physics, which means they bounce off of each other. So on and so forth. The end of the fourth or ninth hole or round, depending on uh, how many you're playing, whoever has the most of these cards is the winner of the game table golf. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Let's come up and talk about it. So table golf. Well, for the most part, uh, this game is a flicking style game. It functions more like a sport than like a card or a board game, because as you're playing the game, your objective is to create the field. You can make it easier for everyone or more challenging for everyone. So of course, the more advanced players will try and make the game a little more challenging for everyone else. And the easier, like more beginner players are going to try and make the board a little easier for everybody. And of course, if you're playing with a larger table, the game will take a little longer. And if you play with a shorter table, it'll take a lot less time. Of course, I think there should be a certain Certain amount of space you want to have on your tabletop and I would also suggest playing on a smooth surface so that the ball can roll per se and so it will feel more like the golfing aspect of the game. 
You're also going to have, of course, the different environmental cards, whether it be grass or water or sand, and they do a good job of expressing how you're going to need to utilize your fingers in order to throw the or flick or toss the ball from one point to another. Of course, the there are certain ones that are more challenging than others. You don't you do not want to get into the water because trying to flick that thing is challenging. And of course, the tabletop weather cards, these things that do different environmental effects for each of the holes, is going to create their own unique challenges as well. It's a nice way of bringing in even more replayability to the game. If you like games like Brink, which is Grant, my cameraman's one of his favorite style games, is a quick game which you're throwing things across the table, which functions like that game where you have that salt packet and you're trying to toss it so it gets just over the edge. And if you can do that, you'll make your opponent eat the salt packet. Ugh. This one functions very similar to that, but instead of going across the edge where you're just trying to hit that little edge area, you're trying to make it into the hole, and the board is set up in different ways. That one specifically is, your, you can pretty much play it anywhere in any way you want to play. It doesn't matter if you're using a table or if you're using books or whatever. This one here is going to need a larger table area space, and for me personally, I prefer to have a longer table, a lot more variety as to how the cards are placed. All that stuff brings in some diverse aspects to the game, which gives it that more golfy aspect to just playing with playing cards. Um, I really, really enjoyed this game. This is a fun, quick little game that I think most people are going to be able to get into rather quickly. And it's also a nice filler game as well. It doesn't take a lot of time to learn how to play, and it could take a bit of time to master. If you're playing with card throwers, you're probably not going to do so well, as if you're playing with somebody like me who absolutely cannot throw a card to save his life. But nevertheless, the game is a lot of fun, and it presents a lot of unique theme challenges that add to, that add to the uh, golfing perspective put into a card game and it plays like a sport where you're just trying to skillfully throw or toss the ball from one point to another. If you like games like these, go ahead and check down below, or this game specifically. Now, it's on the Game Crafter, and you can go ahead and pick this game up, purchase it, and play your own set of tabletop golf. Uh, this game probably is one of my favorite golfing style games I've played. There's one other one I would like to try, but I haven't tried that one yet. So right now, this is, this is definitely in my top two or three games of golf. I really enjoy games like Brink and Dexterity, throwing games and this one has so much creativity that you're going to have a lot of fun for a long amount of time playing yourself some tabletop golf or table golf check out down below on the game crafter if you want to pick it up thank you so much for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next video for game crafter where we show off another tiny game with some unique elements all right i'll see you guys next time